Hello and welcome to another painting tutorial. This week we're going to do another paint along, this time with some boats and some stilted houses in the background. So this is the scene we're going to wind up with and let me take you step by step through the process of how to get there. I have here a watercolor block and that means that I don't have to stretch it. So the first thing I'm going to do is tape off a smallish rectangle. You don't have to be precise in your measurements, but if you work small, you'll be able to finish faster. Now I'm going to draw the major elements of my composition. So I'm going to start with that horizon line. I don't want to cut the painting in half, so I'm going to keep it down in the lower third. And see how in the very beginning I'm keeping these shapes large and sketchy, very sketchy. Because when you're planning your composition, you just want to be looking at the big shapes. So I'll have these shapes balancing each other, then a little bit of land, and then these boats in the foreground. Now that's very sketchy, so after sketching your composition, go back and clean up those shapes now that you know approximately where they're going to be. This stage can take some time, but just be patient with yourself and make sure that everything looks accurate in the drawing phase because then it's going to be a lot easier for you to paint. Let me clean up my shapes off camera and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to start my painting. Okay, now I'm satisfied with my drawing and so I can go ahead and start adding the large areas of paint. Now when you're painting in watercolor, it's always best to start from back to front. So I'm just going to use some straight cerulean blue, start at the top, and just brush it straight across. Go right over the top of those buildings, it's, it's fine. Now I'm going to go in with a green. This is the photo reference that I'm using and I'd like to match that green. So let's scoosh that across too. Foosh nice and big using that large brush. I'm just going to carefully use my big brush on the side and get the delicate fiddly little details of these boats protected first. Then I'm going to wash that color out, get the excess paint off, and now I'm going to blend the tops so that it doesn't look quite so overwhelmingly green. You know, you want it to look more natural. So let's do a little bit of blending. Let's wash it out a little bit like this. That's looking more like grass. And what is the number one rule of watercolor painting? You always let more than one color mix on the page. So now I'm going to throw in some yellows. Just let them mix right into those wet washes. I want a combination of hard edges and lost edges. So you're going to have a hard edge in places like this where the paint dries and you haven't done anything to soften it out. I'm going to have soft edges where I use water to blend the color up and let it get a little bit more lost. I'm also going to use my wet brush here to carve out some of these areas where I'm going to add dirt because I want some dirt. If I put it on while the paint is still a little bit wet, it's going to look more natural. And now, the only thing left that I could do is do a little bit of work on the water. So the water is pretty shallow and the, the color is pretty muddy brown again. I'm starting with the largest shapes and washing them in as large, continuous shapes like this. And I want to work quickly so that I can get all of this water to dry in one pass so it looks like one big continuous shape. The trick is that you don't want to try to control it too much. You don't need to match every ripple to have a realistic grasp of the water that you're painting. So just be aware of what's going on on the water. See here you have a shadow being cast by the hulls of the ships, so obviously those shadows need to line up with the hulls of the boats that you've drawn. And don't forget that water reflects not only shadows, but the colors that are cast onto it. So you'll oftentimes have a lot of different colors in your water, and that's going to help to add some interest and realism too. Okay, now I'm gonna let all three levels dry, then we'll come back and add some more details on top. When the sky is dry, then you can go in and start adding some detail to the houses. So I'm going to use a medium round, 
and I see some red in the detail on this house right here as well as on these boats in the front and it's always good to have a color a bright color like that red carry through somewhere else in your painting even if it's not on the reference material so you don't want one bright color that exists one place in your painting and nowhere else because it's going to look like a bullseye and it's going to look like a mistake instead of that make sure that you follow the rule of three by and large you want at least three repetitions of a color in different places on your painting so that it doesn't look like a mistake so sometimes it can be tricky when you have just one bright color and there really doesn't feel like there is anywhere else to put that color because it's bright purple for instance and everything else you're painting is organic here I'm adding this orange to the base of some of the wood so that I carry through the orange from the boat into the background and I'll carry some orange into the straw of the house and that will give me the same sense of balance without three bright orange bullseyes existing on my painting so see how I'm just now going around the painting working in these little areas and then while that color is still on my brush I'll add it to different areas as well so here's some blue I'll add some blue on this side of the boat over here and then I'll add some blue up here in this tarp so not only do I save myself some time and save paint because I'm not continually rinsing the brush out and getting the same color on it again later I'm also making a better composition because I'm ensuring that that color is existing other places now I'm going to use a round and put the tree in so I will use a stippling broken pattern like this to put in the base of the tree you're going to make much more realistic trees if you let your shapes be somewhat disconnected like this and I'm going to add some shadow to the bottom side of the tree and while that color is still wet I just bounce it in and let it mix on the page that's going to add some really interesting contrasts and give me a richer more three-dimensional form now I'm going to add the posts so I'm going to just use my round and I'm just paying close attention to my reference material to see where to place them but it's the posts that give this piece such an interesting quality so you certainly want to take your time and put those posts in accurately and make them if not a focal point at least visible so it's something that draws attention and then when those posts are completely dry you're going to want some miscuit masking fluid I like the masking fluid that comes in these little needle tools because then you can just carefully squeeze and protect all of those skinny little poles so take your time put the masking fluid down and then let that fluid dry when the masking fluid is dry then you can be free to go underneath the houses and add those extreme darks so mix up a dark neutral and then you can just paint what you see using your large brush working fairly quickly the speed isn't the issue it really is more a matter of laying down these large shapes in large pieces so that they look more realistic so all of this under here is dark and then I work around these little shapes like the tarp to give it a little bit more detail and I'll drop in some purple and some reds things like that then under this house on stilts I have a similar thing happening where I have a lot of shadows and I want to put them in with one big piece and then I have some dark green hills behind here I'm going to lay those in and let the colors touch so that they'll mix a little bit then I can use a slightly smaller brush to go into some of those other dark areas under the rooftops up here for instance top of the roof over here I can fill in some of this beam on the fence over on this side and I can add some color to the tree trunk as well so this step is really just a matter of going around from place to place looking at your reference material and filling in the details that you see you can use some of that dark neutral color in the inside of the boats 
work around these little pull sticks so that you maintain some interesting detail and leave a little light edge on the opposite side of the boat so that it looks like a rim. Okay, on the underside of the boat, because it's curving, it's not going to catch the light, so we're going to have some pretty intense shadows on the undersides of these boats. And then sometimes, depending on the way that the boat is angled, the inside is going to be lighter rather than darker. So these are just details that you need to let the photograph determine for you. And then just take your time and fill them in. Now here I'm just adding some additional dark to the bottom of the boats and letting that shadow color flood onto the water. In order to have as much control as possible in this detail phase, you need to keep your work on dry paper. And so that's why I'm just moving around from place to place, adding a little bit of detail as the painting dries. So let me do a little bit more work like this now. Go off camera, push it up a level, and then I'll come back and do the finishing detail work for you. Now I've cleaned up some of these details, just adding a little bit here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that masking fluid. The best way to do that is with a rubber cement eraser. And just wait until the paint is completely dry so that you don't smear anything. So there's just a little bit left to do here. I'm going to get a really thin wash of some cerulean blue. I'm going to wash over my water. This will just hide any little white speckles that you didn't intend and make it look like there's a unifying color over everything like an atmosphere does. And I'm using a very light touch and also make sure that you don't go over these things more than once. You touch into them, you're going to wet the paint. If you touch into them again, you're going to smear the paint. So you really have to just make do with one pass. After that is done, you can go back and you can add some final darks. You just have to make sure that you're not hitting into areas that are wet from that pass that you just did. But I think that that's pushed far enough for this tutorial so that you've seen the process and take your time in your own studio and clean things up as much as you want, of course. So the last thing I would do here is to remove my tape. So here's the original photo that I was working from. Here's the first time, and here's the second time. So you can see that every time you paint, you're going to learn some new things, and every composition is going to look different, which is why it can be really helpful to repaint the same scene multiple times in your own studio. As you become more acquainted with those shapes and colors, you're going to be able to find better, more efficient ways of putting them down. And those methods are what is going to help you to grow as an artist. So I'll upload that material for you. Go ahead and try this in your own studio. And of course, thank you so much for watching.